think our, our next speaker, Dr. Uh, Hagas Abra Abe, um, he's got a slide presentation. I hope we have it up there for you. Is that okay, Dr. Hagas? And I give you the floor. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. First, I, I really would like to thank you, the European External Program for Africa to host this program and uh, Mr. Chairman and all organizers. I really thank you to, to be the voice, a voice for the Tigran society and Tigran heritage. So yeah, we wouldn't have enough space and time to explain every hostilities uh, in Tigray. So we can only give some of the meanings why they are happening and so on and so forth. So Tigray, yeah, as much has been explained, it is um, a region which is uh, endowed with different cultural and religious heritage that are the results of millennia history, which are also the icons of Ethiopian and African uh, heritage or history and, and pride. And mainly this, uh, uh, like Giz and uh, Giz inscription and manuscripts are like tablets of knowledge and uh, they are also they are also heritage, tangible heritage. So we can they are they are under a production of knowledge even even this time. So and this is like throughout the historical travel of Ethiopia or the East Africa, there was a kind of cultural um, or tradition of heritage production and preservation of heritage, and all these precious heritage today are under these hostilities. And uh, to, 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 to explain how this Tigran heritage uh, and holy places, historical places are icons for Africa, we can begin about the Ge'ez uh, language, which is the only African writing system and which disproves Africa as a continent of non-ethnographical continent. There is a, a single story of Africa as ethnographical continent can only be disproved with this uh, language, which is or originally from Aksum or from, from, from Tigray, and all the historical accounts, literature, um, the church and the state, its values and branding systems are the results of uh, this uh, language, the so-called Ge'ez. And then this language, uh, through this language, we have like hundreds, thousands of written heritages, written artifacts in inscription and in manuscripts. And these are under the, uh, the, the hostilities and destruction of the, the today's uh, the crisis. And the African icon, when I say like uh, next to Gaze, we have also Adwa. Uh, many of us know about the Battle of Adwa, which is uh, a wonderful historical account, which is a pride for Africans and Ethiopians, and which is the birthplace and the birth discourse of African independence and African Pan-African movement. And for the birth or for, for, the, for the craft of the African Union, that's why we have this African Union in Addis Ababa. But today this Adwa, which is in central Tigray, is under the bombardment of the Eritrean and Ethiopian soldiers and AU, as to me, is doing almost almost nothing. And uh, secondly, about the introduction of uh, Islamic religion and Christianity into Africa as a continent, Tigray is uh, a wonderful region for this. The al Mosque, which is a symbol, even though it was uh, built or, or found much later, but it was a symbol for the Islamic settlements in Tigray, second sec, uh, next to Mecca uh, and and um, Aksum Tion, which is a symbol for the dwelling of the Ark of the Covenant and the introduction of Christianity into the Sub-Saharan Africa, are icons and and these are prides for Africa as a continent and for Ethiopia as a region, even for the whole East African region. Um, another point is about monastic life. In Tigray, we have more than 150 rock hewn churches. And the first African monastery in the sub Saharan Africa, I mean, uh, we have Egypt. So, is Dabradamo, which was under uh, demolishing by the Eritrean uh, soldiers. It's all to mean that the icons, the African heritage icons, were targeted by 
by by the hostilities during the hostilities. Tigray was not only uh, an icon of heritage for Africa and for Ethiopia, it was also like working an international diplomacy with the rest of the world lead, mainly to the Red Sea and the Mediterranean world lead. And then it was a hostage for destabilized people during war crisis and during uh, natural disasters. It can be, and we can we can have some of the examples in the sixth century during the, the, the time of Caleb. Uh, he's, he sent some of the, the military supports to Najran ma, to, to support them. And then we can explain about the nine saints who are the Byzantine Roman monks who were persecuted at the Council of Chalcedon in 451, and then they asked a hostage in Tigray. And the same is true for Islamic religion. The Muhammad family fled from the Quraysh in the 613 or 14. So Tigray had been a hostage for the destabilized people, be it Christian or, or, or Islam. So, and this hostage, the sense of supporting, the sense of international or the sense of global voice for others in Tigray has been consistent until today in 2021. Uh, I mean, the eve of the beginning of the war or the invasion of Tigray when we have had the refugees or, or destabilized Eritrean refugees in, in Tigray. So it is, it is one of the, it is one of the uh, I'm sorry, it's a connection problem. So it's okay, we can still hear you at Dr. Hargus. Okay, so it's it's like uh, a place of uh, hostage uh, in, in in many in many uh, years. Uh, so it's like a pride for for Africa or for for the globe. In internationalizing uh, problems, internationalizing and understanding of or searching and collaborating solutions to to, to the rest of uh, the world even, and this the target of the brutalities when when we when we come to the target of the brutalities is that the holy places, the heritage icons and the religious leaders were under under i mean the target of the hostilities that's why i call it an intentional target of value discarding some random killings of 100,000 civilians have been committed and among them 326 priests were reported by the tigran orthodox diocese at the beginning of february but much priests has been killed within the four months after that and uh yeah, hundreds of religious, estimate, estimately hundreds of religious places and monasteries have been demolished. Yeah, and the targets of the brutalists are church elites, historical icons, and they are uh, a lot. I cannot mention all these things uh, because it's it's uh, time taking, and we have lots of uh, evidence with with uh, with uh, reliable evidence about the destruction of the the monasteries and churches. So to demonstrate some of the churches. Uh, the first one, uh, this one is uh, uh, found in Western Tigray, which is one of ancient um, place for the preservation of precious manuscripts, Marawi Christos, Northwest Tigray. So by, it was demolished by the Ethiopian soldiers and many manuscripts have been looted. And the next one is a monastery of Abuna Abraham, which is in Eastern Tigray, which was bombed, of course, uh, relatively, the damage was not worse like other places. This is one of the most known rocky churches and tourist destination, including George W. Bush has visited this place, but it was under the uh, hostile actions by the Eritrean and Ethiopian uh, soldiers. Next, uh, this is Waldeba. One thing that I would like to explain here is during the Derg time, even before, during the Haile Selassie, I mean, much earlier than the 21st century, uh, holy places were a kind of untouchable sanctuaries during the crisis and during the natural disasters. And then people had been hiding themselves, even members of Derg regime have been hiding themselves in this monastery because monastery was like a holy untouchable and so on and so forth. In, in, in the last um, historical uh, things. But today, 
many monks in the monastery of Waldubba has been casted out simply they are they are Tigrans. Just the monks do not have ethnicity. They don't belong to they they don't say they belong to, to any ethnic group, but they have been singled out. They have been uh, single out from from this and uh, and uh, I'm sorry I'm rushing because uh, yeah Dr. Harvest we're going to have to move on a little bit here um just time wise yeah so the motive of the destruction is um, yeah I would say it's a uh, value discarding it's like there is you know uh, this is also like in the Medhani Alim Guatolo. Uh, so it's an Eastern Tigray and many manuscripts and ecclesiastical materials have been demolished and 61 civilians were killed, five priests were persecuted and to wander. One old man was said to have been tied for three days in front of his three killed children, which is shocking and traumatizing. And uh, yeah, so we have uh, different. Yeah, Dr. Hagas, could we could we move to the end slide? Uh, slide thirty seven. Could we? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Please. So uh, I would say the motive of the brutalities. Uh, yeah, in Ethiopia there had been a kind of uh, competition of value ownership of the states and the church that lasted at least. A few hundred years, the uh, beginning of the Solomonic dynasty, I would say, and it has been bold uh, in the last 200 years. Then all the Tigrayan value laden uh, heritage icons that has branded Ethiopia, and that has instrumentalized um, a kind of a new version of Ethiopian narrative, has been in contestation, and the contestation was like I would say between two competitors like the one is uh, it's like preserving one's own heritage and unique otherwise devastated approach of snatching others heritage so the archaic and valley laden integral heritage has been pinnacle components in the east african historiography therefore they were a center of political vigilance from the axmai tigran package hub for hegemony of valley ownership in today's Tigray political atmosphere and that's why they are intentionally targeted and and, uh, and demolished. So by conclusion, people with, I would read, people without their heritage can exist, but they can't live. The grants are now in an extreme demand to exist and to live because without heritage, without anthropology, it's life is meaningless. You can only exist. Irrespective of the world heritage is incomplete without the guy, which is because the world heritage the, the Tigrayan heritage is part of the world uh, heritage, and even the Tigray heritage are icons for African pride. Nonetheless, the role of the Tigrayan heritage for branding Ethiopia and Eritrea has been remarkable. Tigray is suffering by the brutalities. Ethiopia and Eritrea are devastating Tigray. Africa has failed Tigray. World voice is not enough for the cessation of the hostilities in Tigray. But Tigray should not be uh, compromised in any case, I would say. Thank you very much. Dr. Hagas, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. And apologies for, for pushing you along through the uh, slides. But can I say to all the audience that is, are watching, because there's so much detail in it and it's, it's so interesting, um, it will be available. We can make that, that, that presentation available to, uh, and, uh, to anybody that is interested in that. We, we will certainly do so. Um, thank you so much.